I am not Joyce Britton, Jace Britton, sorry. I come with tidings of good cheer. Several of you have been given intertitled cards. Written on these cards are explanations and exclamations, nonsense, noises, and songs. When promoted by the display of the identical card, if you please, if it pleases you, make the contents of your intertitles heard. Read your card out loud. When promoted, if you can't totally see the letters, then the size and the shape of the fonts and the selections might clue you. Use whatever volume of voice comes out. Read it like an old timey detective. <laughs> Read it like your dad would. Read it as if it had been asked to you to do under quite public dress. <laughs> Or don't read it at all, stand it, sit it, or depart in silent rebellion. For the record, my name is Angela, and I've been promised I could create something so that, so let me say, hello, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Here comes the first cue. You're going places, kid. I can see your name in lights, but first, read the script. Would you look? Come on, you, would you look? There lies a what? A daughter. A dead man. You look, you see. There lies a man. There, you look, you see? There, between the two trees. This must have just happened. But there's no traffic coming through. Now there's something. There's no traffic. That's something, because my version of it Nothing's the same. Absolutely nothing. Isn't no traffic at all. It was by Thomas Bernhardt. I did the translation. This is the next line. When he is covered up, somebody's covered him up with some magic finger. I wonder about appendices in monkey studies. It's like the back of the book. If there's something to learn about human and monkey behavior, from monkey behavior, shouldn't they at some point acknowledge the strange human behavior of studying monkeys? Shouldn't it tell us something about monkeys that they've never reciprocated these favors? But then I guess you'd have to have another room with a two-way mirror behind which someone is studying the studiers offering hmms and scribbles. But this, of course, begs the question of an infinite number of one more rooms. And who are they to judge? Who am I? I walk around and I see and believe in a, an impossible city, one being dried out by an unfeeling sun, one being wrung out by incredible striking, slipping stones. This city is a temple being eaten out by vengeful trees with super powerful root structures. So often I feel that I'm building up a card tower as someone else is unbuilding it bottom up. I'm thinking stacked deck, baby. My mind settles back into my vision, my focus on the game, which I had been playing half-heartedly. 
less than half acidly with a seemingly innocuous lack of consequence. We join our hero in, in her affogato mask, one way, well, part way through a board game in a butcher shop with a neon sign blazoning M-E-A-T. A stout Hungarian butcheress is the opponent. She's winning. She hasn't totally explained the rules, though. Her midster, her random rules, we think. <laughs> My turn, your turn. My turn, your turn. We're partway through the game. It's progressed by dice rolls and dunking the plastic horses along a rainbow road and reading these strange phrases and guessing that show tune where the points are tabulated separately. Dames is the correct answer. We haven't used the spinning wheels yet. I don't know what they're for. A roll, I, I roll a seven on a six-sided die. It isn't numbered sequentially. Seven isn't even that high. The butcher picks up a card. Foul. A bummer card, she says. She reads, Chance is annulled by a roll of the die. I ask to see the card, and I read it differently. Well, she says, what a sour gherkin we have found ourselves in. Suppose you could use your unrolled token. I use my unrolled token. That's up, flesh hacker. <laughs> the fashionable gray trench-coated woman who has shouted this phrase leaps into the room and hurls a water balloon which zings over the table and splashes against the wall, leaving an ink-blotted fire truck colored stain on the wall. I see an image of a whale dripping in the splatter. The fashionable gray trench-coated woman flees. The butcher does rise while she squints angrily at the fleeing woman. She looks at the dripping red offense, beginning to puddle below its original point of impact. Looks like a weasel, she says. Indeed, I say and laugh. All the world's a bean, I say and cover my mouth in surprise. It ain't me, it ain't me who nixes up stage and bean. I cover. Or at least uh, bean shaped, you know? Could be. Could be? I don't know, I say. I really don't know. I haven't been many places. I don't know, she says. She says she's only been to Hungary and here. I suddenly get the joke about someone from Hungary owning a meat store, but I don't know how to phrase it. What, what say we make this game a little more interesting, she says. I will do anything to make this game more interesting, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm terribly sanguine about the prospects of that, I say. I search for intention in her face. Her fuzz buzz upper lip and deep dark wrinkle folds reveal nothing. But she smiles and revels in her Hungarian mystique. Everything in the store is yours. If you win, she says. All neon meat. I am lighting out for the territories, she says. I say, okay. A wispy-haired meter maid whose curly, short, wispy hair is so thin and wispy, you can see the shape <laughs> of her skin-draped skull through it as she stands in the doorway and says, they are on to you. <laughs> Buzz off, says the butcher. You have to go back a space, I say, and place a black hood on her plastic horse. horse. She hoots and says, that is why we play the game. The fashionable woman in the gray trench coat stands outside the window I see, returning now with seven or eight trench-coated compadres, various colors, left to right, each points at her eyes and then at the butcher, except for the one to the right of the original fashionable woman. She points at me. A flub, I think. <laughs> I have nothing to hide. I have nowhere to hide it. I touch my straining affogato mask gently. They hunch real low and kind of sway in unison, and the front one is singing...
Others echo that in stage whispers. The butcher is holding the direction booklet. I think you have to start guessing the identity of the hugger mugger, she says. The trench coat gang, left, right to left, each snaps fingers, twice overlapping, slightly and slick like, like, snap, 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 snap. And back, accelerating quick, like, It is a Polish war hero and namesake of countless American cul-de-sac streets, Tadeusz Kuzutsko, I phrase. Carefully, the butcher tears open the hugger-mugger envelope and gasps, defeated. I guess I win. I guess you win, she says, flipping the card over and again, I think so. I don't know, I say. Yes, yes, a victory, she says, and darts behind the counter. You've won. Her busby plume bounces back and forth, accompanied by zipping rips and clumsy packing. Much time will pass as I pack your neon meat into the truck, her voice says. I must light out for the territories. How about I leave it parked across the street? I stand and stare at the glass of the counter. At this angle, I can see the vertical M-E-A-T from the front side window in this mirror, and I see my shadow ad infinitum growing smaller and younger looking in the reflecting reflections. My shadow disappears minutely into some thick cut bacon. <laughs> so out of this M-E-A-T mirror comes my insides as neon light, as strips of pig flesh M-E-A-T, as a silent radio advertisement for wolves. Come, eat, say please, pit a pet, beg. The butcher rises from beneath her busby plume. You know, Pig is a genumi, and people are similar, they say, I say. She says to watch out for the trench coat gang. They are American detectives, she says. They are hot on heel. They know I killed the health inspector. I'm lighting out for Reno, she says. <laughs> Why don't you fill some time while I prepare your truck real discreet, she says. I don't know, I say. Outside neon meat, I sense the blinking playhouse lights of the Mission Theater from across the street and down the premiere of a musical called Act Two, Scene Two. Act Two, Scene Two. I cross the street slowly as it suits me. sound of an old movie projector. <laughs> the picture projected here was supposed to run for almost a minute. Here we are, still waiting, lights in our faces. Mr. Eadweird is explaining, you're supposed to wind a crank and then the thing begins. 